This is our second lecture on Judaism. This lecture discusses practices, the sacred texts, <clears throat> and the branches of Judaism. First, the practices. So like all religions, there are rituals and holidays and morality or ethical components to Judaism. Some of the rituals include uh, prayers that one says during the course of an average day, like blessings before saying food. Some of them include prayers or blessings or actions that are incorporated on a weekly basis, or, as you see in the next bullet point, activities and obligations to be carried out during special times of the year, holidays, festivals, feasts, or when someone's being married, when someone's uh, being mourned, or when someone is coming of age. I recommend that you look at the two links that I've incorporated into these slides for some examples of what happens. For example, the, the candle lighting service that is uh, carried out in the home uh, at the beginning of Sabbath, and the, the blessings over the food. So there are short videos that these links will lead you to to look at those. Finally, there are components of morality in Judaism, and they basically boil down to two things. Number one, a person is supposed to avoid doing harm, and number two, a person ought to obey what God commands. And I think that if you think about it a bit, you can see how these components of morality both link to the idea of covenant, or that humans that God has named as God's own uh, have obligations to live up to in order to maintain the covenant and to be faithful to it. Among the kinds of things that are required for obeying God includes a very long list of commandments, or the mitzvah, or mitzvoth, which is the plural of mitzvah. This includes rules about what one cannot eat and when. It includes the, the necessary of doing good deeds when the opportunity arises, and it includes specific prayers that are meant to be said or recited or sung during certain parts of the day or during certain activities or certain parts of the year or the week. Next, the sacred texts of Judaism. The Torah is the core of the core of the sacred texts. So this is sort of the, the most canonical of the canon of texts in Judaism. And we talked a bit about this in the previous lecture. In uh, It is uh, the story of the, the way of being Jewish that God has given to the people, and it is the, the requirements and the obligations and the prohibitions that come with adhering to that way. I've drawn three circles here to give you a sense of how these sacred texts rela uh, relate to each other. At the core of them, the central circle is meant to represent the Torah. The second circle in the middle represents the Tanakh. So the books of the Tanakh correspond with the books that the Christian Bible refers to as the Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible. So this includes the Tanakh, but also a whole bunch of other texts that are also packaged with it. These expand on and tell more of the story of the law. And just like it works in the American legal system, the story of the law also is the way in which the law's tradition of interpretation continues to unfold. And the same thing is true with the Tanakh. The Talmud is represented here by the third circle, the outermost circle, and maybe you can see that the outsides of it are a little bit blurry. The Talmud is the tradition of interpretation, and because life is continuing, and because our circumstances and our contexts are constantly changing, the question of how to interpret what God expects of a person changes with all of these other changes. Therefore, the Talmud is partially in writing, but it also can be a way of referring to the oral tradition of interpreting the Torah, or a way of thinking of Torah as a living text or a living gift from God, which constantly is brought back to life and layers added to it and expanded on as, you know, human history continues. But every new context raises big questions about how one ought to uh, interpret the law or interpret the way. And different opinions about what that means have arisen to, I guess we could kind of say schisms within Judaism, but it's not quite as a dramatic a schism as we have seen, for example, in Buddhism, or as we will see in Islam or in Christianity. So with, as a result of these changes in different traditions that evolved from different interpretations of how the, the way ought to be lived, 
there are three major sects or branches of Judaism, Reform Judaism, Conservative Judaism, and Orthodox Judaism. Uh, a subcategory of Orthodox Judaism, uh, an important subcategory, is the Hasidim or Hasidic Judaism. Now, your reading gives a more detailed explanation about what the differences are between these. The short story is this. Reformed Judaism evolved from uh, practitioners of Judaism who felt that more uh, dramatic responses to changes in contexts are an important part of understanding what it means to be Jewish. So in other words, in Reformed Judaism, when somebody is trying to understand what it means to belong to the covenant or to live up to the covenant, one can uh, concede quite a bit to the way that social life and history and politics is changing. So, for example, the laws about what is and is not permitted to eat might change more dramatically in Reformed Judaism in interpretation as different kinds of food become available. On the other extreme, in Orthodox Judaism, there is a, a more literal or a stricter adherence to the commandments that Yahweh has given the people. So in Orthodox Judaism, the changes that come with the times are not supposed to override or excessively, you know, bend the way that the, the way of living is interpreted. Conservative Judaism represents a compromise or middle streak between the two. Orthodox Judaism can be found um, predominantly in Israel. Conservative Judaism is uh, a phenomenon that's more popular in the U.S. in Jewish communities than in other parts of the world.